our next speaker, who happens to be one of my dear friends in the industry, Heath, uh, who is just fantastic. I mean, even if you did not meet him in real life, his energy just crosses over from behind the computer and you just feel amazing when connecting with him. Um, he is a brand owner and the founder of Folk Soup Copy. Uh, it's actually one of my favorite newsletters to read. And uh, yeah, <laughs> he has a lot of expertise. So I'll let him introduce you. You know, he, he will tell you more about himself and then he will talk to you about some really good, cool stuff today. Very, very cool. Well, thank you very much for that intro, Anna. That was very, very kind of you. That was, uh, wow, thank you very much. So. Um, it, it is a pleasure to be here. It is a pleasure to speak to the wonderful audience, I mean, of uh, Max Webb, which is so, so cool. So I'm very, very honored and thank you so much to be here. I'm very, very grateful. So now I have a lot of coffee. I'm excited to go and talk about all this stuff with copywriting. Now, I'm just going to go ahead and jump into it. If you hear a dog bark here and there, we'll kind of keep it low. Um, it's a little chihuahua and you can't control those. So, um, let me, I'm just going to share my desktop. We're just going to share the whole thing, if that's cool. Perfect. Okay, so I just created this Max Web Connect, uh, Connect Presents. Is that what we're calling it? Is it like a Max Web Connect? Because that's yeah. what it was, right? I know. Uh, yeah, I love, I love it. I to connect with people, so we figured it's the best name for it. Yeah, no, that's perfect, especially for right now. Absolutely. So this is Heath Wilcox, downright, naughty, simple process he uses to bang out winning advertorials. And, and how this step-by-step -step process works in any niche and can help even the newbiest of affiliates slap together winning av winner advertorials and lightning speed without overthinking or starting and stopping. A very big, like, hefty headline. But I want to show you, um, really cover the basis. This is, I, I break it down really, really simply um, because there are there's so much out there and you also have to so much. So I want to show the easiest process to get an avatorial written, to get it out, to get it tested, and what you would test and how to find the right winning angles where you can then uh, scale from there, which we all, we all love that word. Okay, so uh, who am I? I'm Heath Wilcock. That is me. That is my mustache. A different version of the mustache, I might point out. This is a different version. This is 2.0. Uh, this, but that is me that is adorable Heath. So I write copy primarily in the health supplement space. I've been doing this since 2012, primarily in the health supplement space, got started uh, back in the day, we did a lot of health supplements, mainly outside of the US. And I, I went back and I wanted to focus more on story. So I went and I did get a master's degree in fiction and I taught at ASU at Arizona State University while I was doing my master's degree. So I taught uh, English rhetoric, and uh, analysis and arguments and then debate with all of that with also teaching fiction. So storytelling, a lot of emphasis on storytelling and stories, what makes them work and so on, which I will be going over in the avatorials for today. I'm a brand, I'm a part owner in different uh, e-com brands. Uh, I have my own business, the Fold Soup Copy, which I do Fold Soup Copy story avatorials. And I say that we're so good we can Fold Soup, but the idea it comes from Steve Martin. Uh, it's this, it's a little funny anecdote from one of his first, his first book called Cruel Shoes. And it's the idea is he says, here's how to fold soup, taking a very impossible concept because that is absurd. And then he continues to just show you how he can fold it. And he folds it as if it's a piece of laundry. Uh, I like that idea. The idea is we always overthink things. So I want to show you that we, you don't have to overthink it. That may seem complicated, but I'll just show you. You just do it like normal. And so uh, it's very, that's how I kind of approach it. It's a very silly name and it's stuck. Uh, so there you go. Here's some of the brands, just to give you an idea, just a handful of brands uh, I've written for, continue to write for, uh, or continue to write for. So, and mainly again in the health supplement space, but I also do a lot in the pet space, survival space, uh, as well as lead gen. Um, a lot of, I guess, would, that would blanket all in e -com, I believe. So, uh, and then, okay, so let's just go right into it. What's an avatorial? We're gonna, I'm gonna, we'll make this quick, but just in case for new newbies, for new affiliates, I wanna make sure uh, everyone understands this. I'm, 
and I'm going to show you examples. But the idea, just very simply, is an editorial plus an ad. Editorial plus an ad. So just think of an editorial as kind of um, focus more on how this cool new thing, this whatever this cool new thing may be, how this is going to improve your life, solve the problem that you are facing. Uh, but it's the way it's done, it doesn't feel very salesy. That's the idea is it blends in. It's an editorial. Isn't this a cool thing? So it's almost as if you're reading an article. That's the idea of a good advertorial. Uh, and then I don't want to go too much depth of like third person, third person, uh, or first person plural, first person point of view, like what kind of point of view you want to do or second person or whatever. Uh, we don't have to get too complicated. I'm just going to tell you just if you want to keep it simple, just do first person. We'll just keep it that. Um, but with that being said, I'll show you different examples and what they do. So first I want to show you just your traditional advertorial. So you can kind of get in the mind space of this is nothing new. Uh, the way that advertorials are done today might be different in the approach and uh, the amount of testing and where it's being sent to publications compared to what was first advertorial. So uh, now these are really interesting. So something you know about me. Um, this is actually coming from Playboy magazine. So in the old 60s, 70s, 80s, Playboy magazines, it's just chock full of ads. So they're just full of full of ads, but they're really fascinating direct response style ads that I can't get enough of. So I actually say, and I have like uh, things and I save a lot of, I save all of these. So uh, I love this. And this is really, really good for today with the whole COVID going on. I like this. The day we got out of, I like this headline, the day we got out of the soda pop business and back into the beer business. So it made me think, um, it, this is a good, I see a lot of companies doing that. You know, we, you see a lot of this, this hero kind of brand appeal. The day we stopped selling just normal shirts and we changed everything to sell masks. You know, you see that now appeal and you can see that in advertorial. And then they just talk about their brand in here. What? And this is their this is obviously, um, you know, that more branded thing. There's no click buy button or anything like that. They're just telling you about the brand, but it feels as you can see on the left, this is an article blends right in. It just kind of very, very comfortably. This is a good experience here. You're already reading. So let's just keep on reading. Look at this. Isn't this interesting? And it's a, it's a good experience. So here's another one. I love this one. This is a great one. This is a great this is a great one. Oh, it's the best headline in the world, I think. How to Live to Be 175. And what's so great is your eyes immediately go down to the gym beam. Like, how is that possible, right? Because it's booze. It's just, it's a very, it, here in America, it's a very well-known booze. It costs $11, and you, can and you can have a wonderful weekend or a terrible weekend. So, <laughs> you know, it's, it's cheap, but everyone knows this. But I love this. It talks about that brand. The brand, you know, how to live at 175, it's, it's about what the brand is, the, the brand of Jim Beam. This is how they live to be 175. And it, I, I wish I could go through in detail of all this, but it just goes through their brand story. And it's amazing. It's a great avatorial, but it makes you, it gets you this excitement for Jim Beam. And I think that's the biggest thing. And I'm going to bring up uh, Eugene Schwartz, who is uh, my favorite go-to, uh, the father of like that. Uh, direct response that we know of today. But the reason why I love, love advertorials, and Eugene Schwartz did a lot of advertorials, is he focuses a lot on the desire. The really that channeling that desire, making people very excited about this. Because you read this, even if you weren't in the mood for Jim Beam, all of a sudden you're like, wow, there's so many different aspects to this that makes you excited about this product. So keep in mind about that with an advertorial of the goal of it. You're wanting to just, it's just a, was a conduit, we can say. It's just, you're just channeling their desire onto this sales page to get them to buy, to help, uh, to solve their pain. One second. That was the important step. <laughs> I know, I know, no, it's like, it's kicking in really well. I love it. I remember in this ad, I, I love it. That's so cool. Yeah, it's a great one. And this is from an old, from a, yeah, this is an old Playboy magazine as well. Old Playboy magazine as well. This is, I love this one. If you're smart enough to know how little you know, you're ready. I love that. It's a call, it's a call out and it's a classic. Uh, Gary Halbert did this a lot. He loved the if then statements because it's very direct to the point. He did it a lot in leads. 
if you are overweight, then take a look at the picture on the left because I'm going to show you blah, 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 the if thens. So I love that they did it if, uh, not, it's basically an if then, but if you're smart enough, so you're ready, you know, and then it talks about what that is. Uh, very direct response. This is a great ad. I love this. And this is back in the day, of course, when it was, we don't have our, I remember this when I was a kid. I, my parents had the Britannica encyclopedia collection on our shelves. Because, yeah, exactly. Because we all had to like, I think we got sold by a door-to-door -door salesman that were selling it because we all, the, they hit us on that pain point of, because we were in a world of, okay, if we don't go to the library, how do we get all this? How do we get this information? If we don't go to the library, okay, we can't go to the library today because it's in Arizona in August and it's mis and no one wants to go outside or if it's not on tv so what do you have you have your britannica so they it's it's just fa fascinating so but obviously today don't need it um but man alive it still works it's still this can still be absolutely applicable for today i look at old advertorials here's a nice tip for everyone i look at old advertorials more than i look at like new one i look at old advertorials for inspiration for new creative angles more than what i'm seeing like always just the same avatars that I see online. And the reason why that is, is because there's always opportunity to crack new angles. And I'm going to show you how to do that. Always new angle, always new opportunity. What problem, what I see with a lot of affiliates uh, in general is this, uh, the, uh, we, uh, I understand that to don't reinvent the wheel. I get that. There's certain things, just do this. Yes, I agree. Uh, there is, seems to be this uh, take from what, you know, always what's working, go as fast as possible. That's working, take it and go. Whereas if you spend a little bit more time, backpedal a little bit and really crack an angle, um, not only is it fulfilling for you as a person, an affiliate, building something really, really cool, but you're going to exceed far more than anyone else. Like if you crack a new angle and it works, it's going to crush and can, and destroy everyone else. That's the idea. That's constantly be testing angles. Okay. There's my little rant on that. Um, here's another one. I love this one. This is a listicle, seven major benefits for your unequ unequaled by any other Wait, for you unequaled by any other record club. I love that. They just say it here are the benefits of this and it's a listicle. So this, when people are like listicles, listicles have been around forever. Everyone loves it. 10 reasons why so this is nothing new. This is actually, this is a, one of the older Playboys I have. It's like early 60s. Um, that's a great one. And here's a, here's a one for today. So that's my hand. This is literally just a couple months ago. This is on the stand right by a checkout. They lost 284 pounds on lazy keto. So this is great. This is a good opportunity. So keto, so if we were to take this, let's look at it this way for angles. So let's say weight loss. That's the whole like objective. People want to lose weight loss. Keto is an angle. That's how you can approach it. I want, I have this weight loss. Keto is one angle of many ways to lose weight, right? But within that keto, there's also now sub angles because now keto has been going on for a long time. It's been going on long enough where people now either have tried it, succe succeeded, got fat, fat again, happens to uh, a lot of people. Uh, because they also don't know how to deal with the cravings and blah, 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 or they do too much dairy to compensate. So there's, uh, so within that, now there's an opportunity. An angle just opened up. Now you can lose pounds. The lazy keto, the fun, you know, there, now there's more opportunity. You can still do keto. So it's that idea of having your cake and eat it too. Um, very, very smart. But look at this. This is an avatorial. This is straight up just an avatorial, but in hard copy. All it is, it has a great lead. I have this saved. And then right here, if you see in the corner down here, um, that they're just selling a little little book, just a little book, just a sh like a free plus shipping, I think, book uh, for the keto recipes. So that's how they approach it. They lost keto. How do they do it? From this book. And you can get it. Perfect example of desire. This is women's world. I picked this up. I know it's really weird for me to pick it up, but it's actually really good direct response. And I, I pick it up. I have a lot of these Mac. I, I have a lot of Magalogs and these, this is where I get a lot of my inspiration for the avatorials. And I highly recommend everyone do it. Now let's look at online avatorials so people can kind of get an example. Um, and these are current, like fresh, like yesterday fresh. 
So here's one from Yahoo. Okay. So this is an example, you know, predicting the top tech investment 2020. So now for this, they use advertorial as a, um, uh, for compliance. One second, let me open up the window because we need some air in here because Heathy Ken's getting sweaty. July feels like August. It is, and we're like, we're in a really windy place. Hey, Emily, can you just like, it's just loud. Yeah, there we go. Much better. Okay, so let me go back to this. If they need to edit it out, if not, I do not care. This is oh, all we're just going. Um, actually, I was, you know, I'll ask you later too, but I love the way you do your inspiration from all that pictorial. So thank you. That was so cool that you shared that. Oh yeah, absolutely. It's fun and I'm addicted to what I do. So I'm, uh, that's, you know, I look for, I, I'm constantly screenshotting everything. It drives my wife crazy but I'm constantly looking for a cool thing. I'm always looking to test and try new things. So let me show you, let's jump back into this. I'll give you an example of what an advertorial looks like today. Now this for, now this is in the uh, finance space. So trading and so on, we see uh, Agora, uh, those raging bull, all those guys. What they do is, so, so here's Yahoo. So they click an ad, predicting top tech. It's going to an advertorial as you see here. Very clean. They've been running this uh, plenty. Long time I've been seeing it, keeping an eye on it. So this one right here, it's used more as a, what we call for compliance sake, because they don't, they, again, it comes down to the experience and they believe uh, we don't, they don't like the experience of clicking from ads straight to a VSL, which is down here. So they'll use an avatorial to get them to the video. Um, and that that's used for, uh, uh, Joe, uh, I believe, who is going to be speaking as well, Joe um, on like native advertising, uh, Burton, who is amazing. Yeah, he's amazing. I love him. So uh, he calls them like jump pages, which is exactly that it. Uh, it's just a little buffer between ad and here, heavy on curiosity and credibility. Who is this person? What have they discovered? What can, why should you like, you need to take action right now. Boom. And then it goes to here and then you watch it. And then there's an opportunity to watch watch it or of course be a, a TSL which is a text uh, text sales letter so that's how that is used so the emphasis on this and this is also in the dog space as well I believe uh, Marty's there's Marty's from the the golden hippo group so Marty's also uses that they have a VSL VSLs just because they work once you get one to work it works like crazy um, but with uh, with that being said they do need to have a buffer for native. So that's why they do a little jump page and they're great. And they're very, very clean. I'll show you some other examples. So there's that. So here's another one. Now this one, you, this is a very, very traditional kind of style of an avatorial of what uh, many affiliates will see or many affiliates will run. Uh, the e-com kind of the stuff, the gadgets, I love them, especially, you know, coming around the holidays here, listicles are always wonderful. So I love that. So here's the ad. Why is everybody in San Martin snapping up this, what is this, this 89, up this 89 portable AC? So the ad is showing social proof. Why is everybody in San Martin where I'm located, this area? I didn't know that. <laughs> I didn't know where I'm located. We don't know where we're at. Uh, you know, up in, it, so they're also telling you the price, very cheap portable AC. Why is everyone? You know, why? So they have to answer it, right? So they click because they have to fulfill that answer. Why is it? So did they answer the headline up here? says, finally, you know, real relief from scorching summer heat and humidity where, uh, wherever you go. Very straight to the point benefit. This is it. Um, and then from the advertorial, it then goes to uh, the sales page because we do this also. Advertorials are key for affiliates for tracking purposes as well, as you know, as, as I'm sure that's, that's not my expertise. I just know that that's why <laughs> I, I could not tell you the uh, back and forth. I just know, make sure you have your uh, ID and do it right or whatever. I've heard so many like crazy things. It's like, oh no. We'll okay. You. Just work with MaxWeb and we will help you set it up correctly. There we go. 
I would not, yeah, I would, uh, I would falter there. So here's another one. This is lead gen one. This is great too. And lead gen is always great. Solar uh, looks like it's popping up. I know solar was really, really big. It's always kind of there. It kind of like ebbs and flows. It seems, I don't know. I don't have a pulse on it all the time. Um, I think I just got a bunch of sweat in my mustache. There you go, folks. There you go. Oh, sweat and mustache because I'm working for you. Okay. Um, very, very simple. Here's the painting. Look at that roof. Forget expensive roofing. Do this instead. That's a classic ad. You know, forget, forget this. Forget beauty creams. Do this instead. Oh, great. You know, for women that hate beauty creams, great. Very, just very, very clickable thing. Uh, and then you, you have to fulfill it. So then it goes to here. Very straightforward. California homeowners are using government rebates to go solar. So they're, that's, a, that's a very fresh angle. So they're using the whole, the stimulus that's happening right now with COVID to go solar. Why? Because they, you know, to save money and so on. So then they would click on that. This is, this was an excellent editorial. The way it's positioned and look actually on the page, it was um, optimized. It looked really well. And then it would go to, you know, calculate my savings. And then it would go to um, the front end uh, survey part. So they can get you. So then at the end, they would email you, text and call and so on to get you set up for solo uh and that's how the lead gen works so again is advertorials are uh critical i don't know i don't know where it is on a scale but i know from just experience and working with uh excellent media buyers in the native in space i know that advertorials will always they just convert better they convert the people if you get an advertorial that that works they, they convert better because you get more education. You get more of that. They are, you're, you're, you're taking care of the customer coming through. You are entering the conversation in their head and they want a solution. So if you get an avatar of the works, that's, it's always going to convert better. You're going to get, um, there was something else I was going to mention with that. <clears throat> Pause. I'm trying to think. Hmm, maybe it'll come back to me. It's all good. So I guess that goes into why I write an advertorial. Now, here's why I really write an advertorial. And this is really cool uh, to do. This is how I approach it. And this is also going to help everyone, you listening, you viewers, uh, help you kind of figure out the right angles and the kind of angles to attack. So here's how I approach it. I say, how do you sell the existence of aliens to a skeptic? Right? How would you do that? So if, say for instance, it was a skeptic, someone who, go, who comes out and you're like, I don't believe in aliens. I don't believe them. I don't believe them. Okay. And so like, how would you approach that? So here's how I would approach it is I approach it with multiple different angles because everyone is different. Everyone is uh, persuaded. You might've heard the ethos, pathos, logos of the Aristotle. Like you want to use the ethos, pathos, logos, which is uh, the credibility, the uh, the emotion, and also the logic. Right? However, everyone is persuaded a little differently depending on who they are. So for me, I'm more persuaded by credibility. That's why I have to stay away from these guys like at, at Costco and, and other pla like, uh, places that they try to sell me direct TV and if they're really charming. If someone's really charming, I'm done. I'm just going to buy whatever they're selling. Here's if they're wallet. charming and if they're what you just hand them the wallet here you go oh uh, no oh uh, i'm the worst if someone's really charming and very knowledgeable that's i'm just like oh whatever you're saying i want it it's it's really good yeah whereas other people but majority are persuaded illogically in the emotional area mm -hmm. they're persuaded by what just that the uh that very animalistic way of like what gets them up in the morning what gets them driving and everything most of the people are persuaded by that emotion that's why we use a lot of emotion in avatorials and vsls and everything because that that's because in the end you're not selling a thing you're selling a different way a better way of living because of the thing it's the relationship to the thing that you're selling if that makes sense oh yeah 100 percent. okay am i frozen no you're good Okay, we're good. Okay, so uh, here's how I approach it. So let's say the sales page, the sales page is aliens. So we have four different angles to approach it. 
So the first angle, I'm going to approach it on the ship. I'm just going to get you to say, show you the data, the credibility that we found a ship. We've seen a ship. There's actual pictures and evidence. Here's the ship. It's just focused on the ship. Isn't that interesting? That's interesting. We just focused on the ship. Therefore, wow. So I approach it on the ship part, and then I go to the sales page of aliens. You got me hooked now because I do believe, say, for instance, I'm more about the mechanical kind of person. I understand ships. This is interesting. Okay, angle two, the government. The government's been hiding something. I'm more of a skeptical person about the government. I can get behind this. What have they been hiding? Boom, go into sales page. We have an angle there. Angle three, religion. What if a religion aspect? So you, there's a mass, we have religion is massively important in the US, for example. So if we approach it from a religious standpoint, you can get, I mean, there's the, the audience for religion is on, it's huge. So if you approach it from that angle to here, boom. And then of course, story angle, someone that it actually happened to. So someone that this actually experienced to, uh, what that felt like, and then making that connection to the audience reading it. What does it feel like maybe for people not to believe you? So there's that. So that's how I would approach it. So in other words, now you go back to this, when you say like, how do you sell an aliens to the skeptic? You can do it, you can do it, but you're not selling aliens. Does that make sense? I'm not just throwing aliens and go, ah, believe them. Here's all the proof. Oh, no, no, no. I back it up a little bit. I understand them first. So I approach it in the four different angles. Because again, you're entering, you enter the conversation the prospect is already having in their head. This is from Eugene Schwartz. Read them, pick them up. I keep this book by me at all times. This is, uh, I mean... I'm constantly, I'm always writing copy, but I keep, this is Breakthrough Advertising, pick it up. Uh, it's worth every penny. You can pick it up through uh, Mr. Uh, Brian Kurtz is selling it because normally I've paid like over 300, this is a side topic, but this is good for everyone. And also if you want to write your own advertorials, just pick it up. Uh, I bought this for 350 bucks. So it was very, it was uh, a lot more but worth every single penny and I zero regrets um, at all. But however, Brian Kurtz now holds, who is a legendary marketer and everything, um, he holds the rights to uh, print it. So you can go to his site of the Breakthrough Advertising and pick it up for, I believe, $125. That is an insane good deal. So I just gave everyone a deal. Go get that because that is, uh, yeah, that's, this is, yeah, for, that's a good, that's a good point. I haven't kept any of my, college, no, actually I have. I have a few college books, but uh, this is a, this one you'll always keep, but most of my college books, you don't keep them. You don't keep them. This one you'll keep. <laughs> um, but this is really, really important. So I want to get back to that uh, because, but you are entering the conversation the person is having in their head. Um, you, if you want to really write a good advertorial and really get conversions, spend more time on your audience, understand them, understand how they walk, talk. What is the relationship like to this offer? What would it be like if they take it? What would it be like if they don't take it? You know, really, really understand your audience and where they're coming from because a lot of times they just go, oh, it's a winning offer. You know, it's a winning thing. And they just throw it out there thinking it's just, it's going to stick and everyone's going to grab it when they don't really take a moment to understand who they're going for. These are people. Um, and I know a lot of media, we tend, a lot of media buyers have seen, we get, can, you can get kind of stuck with numbers, which is great and critical. Uh, but those numbers are definitely the audience. Got to remember that. So how do you find a winning angle? How are we on time, Anna? Oh, we're good. This is really good information. It's okay. We can, we can go past our time. I'm loving this. I'm even finding a lot of right. things too. Great. How do you find a winning angle? How do you find a winning? So this is how I approach it. Uh, what dead angle, yo? I asked that question. What dead angle, yo? Because <laughs> what dead angle, yo? DAT, D-A-T. It's so dumb. But acronyms help me out with this. So I ask what dead angle. So what dead angle? So here's what I ask. This is what you ask your audience to find the angles and then where you would go. So here's how I approach it is I ask my audience, what, what are their desires? What angers them? What really, really angers them? And then what makes them feel trapped? 
And I, I, I really focused on these three. So desires, obviously the big desire, we know that, the hopes and dreams. What do they really desire? What angers them? Now, this is, these last two are the most critical ones, I think. I don't think I, I know because here's the difference. So we could go with sad, what makes them sad. But sadness, I try to think of what are the emotions that push forward that would make that desire even more that you want. So sadness does it. Say, for instance, let's just say hypothetically, you're depressed, sad. You're depressed, sad, you're overweight, things are not going your life. Your desire is to have a better life, but you're sad and depressed, you're not moving. So if I were to give you an offer in front of like, hey, you know, it's just, it's gonna be so much more. It's gonna be so much more for them to be in the mindset to do it because they're already, sadness, they're already feeling bad. Like, I don't wanna make them feel even more bad. So let's focus on desire. So, and here's where anger comes in. Anger pushes people forward. Here's an example. We have, I just spent way more money than I ever thought I would on a toilet. That's how I'm gonna, that's, I'm gonna start this story because we are living in an RV. We don't wanna do pipes. We don't wanna do a black tank, which is where all the, the nasties go to. If you, if you live in an RV, uh, there's two tanks, gray tank and a black tank. I don't want the black tank, right? I don't want pipes. So we bought what's called an incinerator toilet. It's exactly as it sounds. Aww. It's amazing. You get to turn everything. It just turns into ash. And then you just like dust out your RV. Like it just, everything, all your waste. Like, so it's a toilet. So when you use the toilet, everything can turn into ash. So we use gas instead of like uh, water, normal system. Very, in the long run, it's going to save us a lot of money because I've already spent way more money fixing the black tank. And it's just like, it's a nightmare. So we're getting this toilet, but it's the most, it is a Mad Max fire breathing, badass toilet that uh, because we're in transit all over the place in California right now, it's been a nightmare to get this stupid toilet to us. Oh. So here's what happened. I get on the phone with the people. Hey, where's our toilet? Where's our toilet? We need to install it. We have someone coming to install it. I'm like on the phone with these company. It's a, it's an expensive toilet. Cause they can like turn your poop into ash. It's amazing. So I'm looking for this toilet and then they, they let me know, Oh, we mailed it to basically our last location we were at. We gave them the new location. They confirmed it. So it was on them. It was their fault. So when I said it out loud, Oh, they mailed it to our last place. My wife heard me and she turned around and she was like furious because we've been going back and forth with this company. So she was very, very angry. I'm pretty chill. I'm like, okay, I get it. We worked through it and stuff. But with her anger, she was able, she pulled up all this document. All of a sudden, she just got into this like insane pushing motivation, you know, to get this figured out, to solve it, to get that solution. It was, it was interesting. Rather than like sadness, you can go more of a spiral. You can just like, you start to think about yourself and everything. I want to think about the people's desires. So, think about what angers them. And then the last one is what makes them feel trapped? This is a big one because this one I chose specifically because when people feel trapped, it's when that desire comes, if you are able to fulfill it in a way that is satisfying, they'll take it. They'll take it. They'll love you forever. Trapped is more motivating than just like, like, or another one is stuck, but I just think trap, like you just feel it, that there is no way out. And that's how I approach it. So when I'm looking, when I look at my audience, so I take the offer, who is this for? Really understand the audience. What are the desires? What are the angers? What makes them feel trapped? And then from there, you can create your angles. You can create your angles from that. What that angle, yo? <laughs> <clears throat> And that's, that's how I approach it. So then from there, you then go out to where you need to go to do your research. I go to Reddit, you go to Amazon, you go to Google, you do your, you do your due diligence. You go to forum pages, you're looking at comments, you're understanding this audience. You get on the call, you could do surveys. Uh, surveys are awesome if you're able to do that. If you have, a, if you have a, um, people that you can survey, you can reach out to them, survey, and say, you know, there's no obligation we will not we will not sell you anything we just want to know more about you those are huge 
to really, really understand your audience. And by doing that, by going to the source, you're going to get all these things and then you're going to create these advertorials. So let me give you a few examples. So this one I know has been running a lot and then we're going to jump into one I can show with Max Webb. So we all been familiar with Blissey. Possibly many people have been seeing it. I know this has been running for a long, long time. They have many, many iterations of this. Many retargeting. They have lots of advertorials out there and I have them all saved in various spots when it comes to like either lit, they have a listicles and so on, but it's smart and they're doing it really, really well. Um, so this is first person. And so I changed my sleeping habits after watching a supermodel sleep on a plane. So she changed her sleeping habits and her desire of course was watching a supermodel sleep on a plane. So it's, it's also a curiosity. Like, wait, why, why is that? Like I changed my sleeping habits to watching supermodel sleep on a plane. How did she sleep? It makes them immediately want to know, like, how does she sleep? That's so different. She's a supermodel. Clearly, what is she doing? What's her, you know, and then I try this celeb favorite trick for seven days. I'm never going back. More curiosity. What is this trick? And obviously it's a pillowcase, right? So the first person point of view is it's starting off with that problem. So the, the focus of the angle of this is just the creases on the face. Basically, when you wake up, you look like garbage. You don't feel great. So that's the problem, how it first starts off. Uh, and then it goes into the solution, of course. So here's how I do it. The first part, like all of this, in the beginning of an advertorial, 250 to 450 words is a lot of the times how I do it is a first person point of view story. Uh, the pain agitate solution. The pain was this, which is an angle, right? That remember what dead angle, yo. <laughs> so the pain, what, so, so what angers them? What traps them? What makes them feel trapped? What, what are the desire, desires? Put that pain up top. And if that pain is true, then what else is true? In other words, how does that agitate? I always say that if that's true, what else is true? Right. If I wake up sad and slow, Okay, what else is true? Um, you know, what other what other conclusions can you make? If that's true, what else is true? Um, you know, uh, let's see, let's see. Wake up sad and slow, and it's also true that um, not looking. Maybe my outlook on the day is not great. Uh, maybe possibly it's sad and maybe something happened recently in my life and it's caused me to feel this way. So like there's so many steps you can take um, that can add to that agitation. So, and then when it gets to the solution, boom, right here, it's just the solution. Here's the solution. And then they go in depth in talking about it. Avatorials, a lot of times, again, this is a good example of channeling the desire because you're taking a prospect from pain, agitate, and then here's the solution. And then they go a step further. And this is why we do the day one, day three, day five. Uh, for dog, for dog or supplements, I always do week one, week two, week three, week four. And the reason why is because it's a future pace. The idea, a lot of times people now know that this is not a pill that is one and done. You need to consistently take, take it. So I love looking forward to these and writing them. And the reason why too, is because you can make them real, very realistic. So really show them the expectations, really detailing it. Cause if you were to write, say for instance, week one, for a supplement and it's like i can't believe it my waist is already down it's like ah bullshit you know no one's gonna really believe it right sorry i don't know what we are on swearing is it okay sorry i swore You're good. oh okay um i, I just i wasn't sure i i, I but i kind of figured we're all just a bunch of affiliates with like i'm you know i was following through it's really good i mean i get to see a lot of content naturally but this is so good and a very to the point and it's not extreme, which, you know, a lot of uh, affiliates tend to go to the extreme and then you get the product owner in trouble and it's, we never want that. So this is amazing because it's not yeah. that they want, they agree. I love that because you put the expectation out there that it's a process. It's not an overnight change. Yes, 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 yes. So here's something that I, I learned. So I used, I, I taught improv and performed it for 10 years. And there's a lot of things that I've learned from improv that I apply still to this day with my own writing. We, it was like a flash forward scene. So we would start a scene and then um, 
we would do like a scene and then we would say, okay, what would happen, you know, two years from now, five years from now, you know, the, these kind of characters in that scene and it makes it really funny. Uh, and if, as long as you focus on the relationship, blah, 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 in the scene, it could become really, really funny. Um, however, there was a problem with a lot of these scenes is we sent, we tend to always go to this death. It always ended in death and always all the time it just always was death and it became kind of like one note it wasn't surprising it wasn't interesting it didn't feel real it felt hacky it felt cheap it felt just like that's where we go to because it's very easy it's very easy to be like because we all know death right it's always there it's our constant companion it's death but it's so easy so when i see these advertorials or vsl it's like ah, oh, i couldn't believe it he almost died and it's like and then you and then you keep watching the VSL and it turns out it's about toe fungus, right? And so, yes, that may convert. Yes, and I've seen those convert. And yes, I've used them. However, don't feel like it's just your crutch. You don't always have to be like, it doesn't always have to end in death. It doesn't also, it doesn't mean that you're going to get skinny overnight and you should never get skinny overnight and no one should. And here's the thing too, is keeping an eye on, more people are being more susceptible to ads to nowadays. So if you're seeing blank, 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 you know, the same thing over and over, odds are your audience is too. And I always think of it this way. If you're bored while writing it, the audience is going to be bored. If you've seen it, plant it, audience is going to see it. You need to start breaking out. You need to start be testing more angles. Um, and then make it realistic. Make it, make it realistic because if you're able to, to pause, take a moment and really bring in some strong emotion, detail certain things out a little bit more, uh, they'll believe you more. So a lot of the times for week one, here's an example for supplements, I'll say, the first thing I'll notice, uh, I'll, I'll even write in the week one, I'll say like, now I know uh, I just got them, so I wasn't expecting much to happen. However, I did notice that I seem to have a little bit more energy around 2 p.m. In other words, I wasn't always drinking my 2 p.m. coffee that I normally did. Hey, good first step. And it's really exciting. That's like week one. And then week two, I can kind of, and then you kind of slowly like crank it up. I always think like you just kind of crank up the results for them to really picture it. And that gets them in a better mindset for them to purchase it and to experience what you just detailed. So that's how I approach it there. Okay. Now, so what dead angle, yo? Now let's bring up an example. I just saw this from Max Web. I just got this email. So here's another, I thought this is a good opportunity to talk about a perfect example of an avatorial that this is a fresh one. So I, I'll just go ahead and I'll advertise it to your affiliates. Maybe we'll just start running it. There's lots of angles for this. I mean, storing is, <laughs> and this is a, I like, there's a lot to like about this avatorial. I really enjoy. First off, I like that you have the progress up top. I think that's very smart. There's something very smart about this to show their progress. Um, I like that you broke it down with the Snorby gone, obviously like the title and it goes into the problem. How does it work? What is it comfortable and all this? So I know that this was written in a way for affiliates to take it and to make their own tweaks. Correct. This, this is like written in almost like a very general way so they can, it's not one focused, one angle. It's a general way. So affiliates can go, oh, perfect. You know, this snow be gone is incredible snow reduction aid. So that's a very just, this is what it is. This is how it benefits, right? Um, and, and so they have lots of opportunity to split testing, lots of different headlines, images, and leads. Okay, so this is what now working with media buyers, affiliates, this is, I will just tell you, this is what we test all the time. We always test first, not first, we test many different designs of a landing page. We'll test many iterations. We look at all the different landing pages out there. We look at the sophistication of the audience. So in other words, I just think of it this way. Where, where's the audience hanging out? Where are they hanging out? If they're hanging out over at McDonald's, can we make this look kind of like comfortable to McDonald's? I, you know what I mean? Like if they're hanging out over here, can we, if that's our audience, can we make the avatar look a little bit like this? Um, another example for anyone that plays video games, there's a lot of mechanics that video game developers will take from other video games. 
And one of my friends brought it up. He goes, well, it's nice because a lot of video ga gamers, they don't want to lose, they don't want to like restart certain mechanics. You know, there's some, it's nice to have some familiarity with their own tweaks. Right. So, and it approaches that audience. And I think of it that way, um, that you don't, don't make it something that they would never see, you know, just, right. I, I'm looking at the experience of where they're at. So what we test, a lot of different designs, and then uh, the headline, the image, the top image here. Oh, nice, we have a clip, does it go? Perfect, okay. For loud snores, I love that. Um, and then the lead. So this first, this one might be something else, but the lead typically is usually within an advertorial, it's usually the first paragraph or the first like 200 words, 100 words, pretty short. Um, and that's what we would test. So I test multiple leads, multiple headlines, and multiple uh, hero images up here and do different variations as long as, as with also the design. Um, and then when do we pop this up? I've tested it where it pops up like either right away, maybe that works even more, but a lot of times I want them to read. So I wouldn't have it pop up until about, until I introduce the problem or I'm sorry, the solution. So I would have it, and this is just a thing that we've been testing uh, and it's getting a good, last I checked was like 35, 37 CTR percentage on, on a uh, pain patch. And so what we did is like down, we wouldn't have the, the pop-up button come up until we get to the product. Cause I wanted them to read. I wanted them to engage with that emotional story that I, that I chose to write and uh and then go from there but i i mean i like this it gives them lots of opportunity this is great there's so many angles and opportunity for snoring so let me just give you a couple so i did one so first off um one obviously is going to be energy you're not getting enough oxygen at night so your brain isn't so here's an angle here's a good example your brain produces these different uh like toxins throughout the day like proteins I'm not a scientist, you can look it up. I know it's out there, but basically your brain builds up toxins throughout the day. And when you sleep, it's almost like your brain goes through like a, a cleansing machine. Your brain, your body's able to cleanse out the brain, remove those toxins. That's why a lot of times, if you don't get enough sleep, uh, you, don't get, you, know, you don't get adequate sleep, you still remain with those leftover toxins, I think of it as, I don't think of it, you, you're not cleaning out your brain. In other words, you wake up and you feel like crap. Everyone knows what it feels like to feel like crap when they wake up and they didn't get a good night's sleep. Well, an angle can be the fact that the fact that this can help you, you know, basically clean out your brain, have more airflow, have more oxygen, clean out the brain. So therefore you can feel better that next morning. <laughs> so you can just take it on the, the sense of just uh, perhaps an angle would be look at the desires the desire would be performance at work maybe there's more task on you so the desire is performance at work so what angers them angers that they can't seem to get the sleep that they want to get to sleep when they were 25 what happened uh, i got fatter i had more kids i got stressed all these things what and that makes them feel trapped what makes them feel trapped i gotta lose weight in order to sleep better i can't lose sleep weight to sleep better uh it's it's harder i don't have the motivation blah blah, blah. okay maybe for right now this can help you this can help you at least, because a lot of times people that want to lose weight, I'm going off a weight loss angle. A lot of times people that want to lose weight, it's hard for them just to get going. They don't, that just that initial step. So it's almost like you can say this is like, this is the initial step to help people that have never been able to drop weight, finally drop weight. Well, how? It clears out their brain more at, at night to get more oxygen. They have more motivation. In the morning, you can feel it. And then those small steps, or those, um, those big steps that you thought now seem very small. All of a sudden you eat better. All of a sudden, you, you know what I mean? So that's an angle. So again, what's their desire? What angers them and what makes them feel trapped? And then you got an angle and then you can go from there. Uh, don't overthink it. I mean, once, uh, and I know this sounds weird, but here's an example. Design is really, really key on this. I know it sounds odd because copy is really important, but design is really key. And here's an example. There's one editorial, one of my, one of the best editorial writers right now, currently, her name's Eden, and she's phenomenal. She's one of the best editorial writers. <laughs> she lives in Israel, unbelievable. 
anyway, there was one advertorial I remember back in the day. She wrote for the hearing, uh, for the hearing aid space, for the hearing space, and it's an incredible advertorial. But it, the design, it just wasn't converting where it needed to be. We shifted the design, same same words and everything. Boom, it beat all the other advertorials. I couldn't even like beat it. It was perfect. Her words with that design, it just won. It, and it continued to crush it. It continued to be like the winning advertorial. So, and that's really, really key. And, and it's, it's in, the reason why I brought it up too is it looks kind of similar to this, of just straight down the middle, very simple, uh, but it worked for that audience, for the older demographic, for sure. So, I mean, I gave you a lot to think about, everyone. I hope that uh, right. makes it all make sense. Um, and then I just, at the end, uh, thank you, of course, but I, I, here's my email. I mean, I, I give out fun information for freezies, uh, heathwilcock.com. You can just go sign up. You can see what I'm all about, who I am. My emails are not typical emails. Um, I, 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 I tend to write whatever I want to write about. So, but it's, I tend to, I want to have fun with my audience. So I, I hope that gave you a good perspective and I want you to, I want, my goal is to make everyone feel very confident if they can write it themselves and they can feel good, it feels good to get the percentages and get a winner yourself and feel like you can do it. It's very encouraging. Um, it's always encouraging to complete the thing that you want to complete. With that being said, I know the importance of running a business and delegating and making sure all the parts are moving correctly. And I don't want people to feel overwhelmed that they have to do it all themselves. However, if those that want to do it and feel like this urge to do it and feel con I want them to feel confident they can do it. It's really, it's not that hard to, um, at least to come up with some things to test and to get it out there and to see some cool things happen. And with that being said, keep in mind too, I fail all the time. I'm literally, I want everyone to know this. I'm literally going to end here and I have to go fix an advertorial in the pet space because it's not getting the percentages we need. And that's part of the process. It's like, you know, come down to the offer, design, all these things. And I've had ones where it's like out the gate, all three advertorials works. Got the percentages at like 30% and above, all, all three, great. Then the other one, it can just vary. So it's just like, it all, um, it fluctuates. So I wanna encourage you to don't feel bad if it's like, ah, oh, it's not getting the percentage you want. Um, it happens all the time. It happens all the time. And, but what's great is, solving that problem because once you solve that problem then i think of it like you just formed a little gem that's yours and now you know for next time because you solved that problem you saw the data change now you know and you, now you have this gem because you just solved something really really cool and now you know anyway there you go love you all i hope that was uh i hope you learned something cool that was awesome. Thank you so much. And you know, as you are as you are speaking, uh, we got you know a lot of questions. And you know, before I let you go, one of the main questions that always comes up from affiliates is, "All right, this is great, but should I invest time um, and resources into learning this myself?" Or should I just go and hire someone that's really good at writing copy and paying them to do it? Um, that's a great question. That's a really, really good question. I'm a big believer that I believe you should know every part of the business what we're doing. I, I do like be able to, I'm trying to get better at it. I want to talk shop with the media buyers, with everyone. I think that is very, very vital to me. I think copy probably if not the most important copy and creative, if not the most important right now. And will always be. I want to just say that it'd be very clear. Creative and copy are going to be the most important things because our brains will be able to can conjure up and create more imagination, more creativity, more things than an AI and so on. And, and so I really believe it's important for all business owners to, to absolutely learn copy and to be able to do this and throw your hat in the ring and feel confident doing it. <laughs> if you want to hire a copywriter, you absolutely can. You're going to get varying prices. Um, and you're going to get varying rates and so on. And also you don't know how well it's going to turn out if they're going to write something, bail, not help you optimize, not help you give multiple leads, multiple headlines. I've seen copywriters, they just kind of throw out an advertorial thinking that that one advertorial is going to work. 
um, just with that headline, that lead and just being like, no, I can do it. And I'm just like, Oh, I love your confidence. I'm still, you know, I do multiple split testing all the time. I'm, uh, per advertorial, I'll come up with at least six headlines and I always include at least four leads, four different leads to split and then multiple different, uh, suggestions for the images, the hero images enough to really, really test. Uh, and then, so it's, it comes down to your time spent. If you really don't want to do it yeah you can give it to another copywriter but you can also really really do it and be great at it and it's it, it, and i want you to think that it is worth your time because you're learning more about your audience and learn more about your product and you're you're just flexing a muscle or exercising a muscle that i believe everyone should copy is going to always always win i completely agree i did not want to influence your answer in any way but in a in a previous uh speech and in a few of the podcasts i always emphasize and i encourage affiliates no matter the size to really try to learn this because it's key to uh you know being super profitable and successful you want to learn this it's okay down the road you want to hire someone to do yes. it but you should at yes. least to try and be uh yes. you know educate yourself a bit when it comes to writing yes. good copy because it's it's vital this is what makes the difference between you know earning uh, a few hundred dollars or a few thousand dollars every day so 100 percent. and here's a good example too uh there is a great story you can look at uh lydia davis i can't remember her name it's called shitty first drafts everyone should read it shitty first drafts um, and that's really what it is, is, is a lot of times people are afraid to write the advertorials or afraid to write is because, uh, you know, they don't know what to write about. A lot of times that's just anxiety. That's them kind of just getting in their heads. Um, so there are many authors that always say like, just sit down and, uh, Dan Harmon, who's a co-creator of Rick and Morty and creator community always said, you know, sit down and prove to your, prove to everyone that you're shitty. And, and the reason why, and he's making a point, he's saying like, if you're trying to prove that everyone that you're genius, you're going to keep deleting the sentence. It's not genius enough. It's not smart enough. But if you prove that you're shitty and you're like, oh, I want a dinosaur in here. You're having fun now. You're writing. You're having a good time. Yeah, you're having a good time. And like, even though you might delete the dinosaur or whatever, but you're, you're writing, you're doing the, th that you, you just got to get it out there. So uh, it's okay to be shitty. I'm shitty all the time. And I think it's really, really fun to be shitty. So. And here's an example too. Even though I write advertorials, I all my work gets re, uh, read, and I get feedback from high-level copywriters that are more experienced than myself. So, uh, you know, I get so Stefan Georgie and Justin Goff, uh, two of the probably and most successful have sold millions so when i finish an editorial they look it over uh, or an email or sales bsl or anything so they look it over so they tell me how i can do it, do it better and the reason why you do that too is because when you write it you're making connections in your own head that happen on the page so it all makes sense to you but when you get someone to read it out loud or you get someone to point out things that you didn't see because you're in this tunnel vision of your genius of like I, you're in the flow when you get someone else to read it and they go, and as long as they just look for the things that are confusing, I always look for, does it make sense? Is it confusing? I want to make it as clear as possible. And then also, you know, does it, does, does it create this, does, I want to wait for the reaction. Does it desire, is your desire to get this? Do you want to buy this? Um, that's how I approach it. So keep that in mind too. When you get, it's, I don't, I don't write alone. I have to have other people look at my work uh, or else I'll never get better. I'm always looking to get better. So keep that in mind too. Um, I'm not an affiliate. I've done affiliate stuff, but I'm not affiliate yet. Yeah. And it keeps trying to get me. <laughs> it's just a matter of time, you guys. <laughs> well, thank you so uh, much. I yeah. mean, honestly, I, you know, I feel like we could do this at least for a full day. We should one day just to do like a, a mastermind, just, <laughs> just talking coffee. Keith and I'm yeah. there you go that'd be fun that'd be fun <laughs>
<laughs> we got it. But generally, I loved it. I enjoyed it so much, and I personally learned a, a lot of cool stuff. So you're amazing. I appreciate you. Thank yeah, you so much. Of course. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.